Hi, you guys. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Danny Lovely. <laughs> and yes, I know that I was gone for like a week, but uh, I had some entrepreneurial things that I was working on. I'm still working on, but I just had to step away for a little bit to, you know, focus on that some more as well, too. But yes, you guys, I am back. So I'm going to be, you know, pushing some more videos out. And <laughs> you guys, in the light of the new bleach series coming out okay it okay so first of all i've decided to rewatch bleach the bleach series all over again from the beginning for like the millionth time as i have said before it does not matter how many anime shows that i watch i always go back to my day ones which is bleach and Yuasha, and like can re-watch those from the beginning like I've never watched them before I just love it even more every time so yes um until all of the episodes for the new you know Bleach series has been released because like I said before as well too with my favorite anime shows I love to just binge watch it through I don't like just being thirsty and be like oh my gosh I can't wait till next week for the next episode no I have to like I want to watch it all the way through I want all the episodes out so I can just you know just watch it all so while I'm waiting on that I was just like <laughs> I'm just gonna rewatch the series all over again so yes I have started rewatching the Bleach series all over over again i think right now i'm on like episode 98 because sometimes i'll be like watching it while i'm going to bed too and be falling asleep but i think i'm on episode 98 right now um so yeah so in light of that today for our anime video that we're going to be watching so yeah first of all wait yes i did not start my cycle yet and actually i have not finished um my future diary because i was just like i uh, hold on pause pause I'm gonna start rewatching Bleach first. So yes, but in light of that, we're going to be reacting to the top 20 Bleach fights. Yes, the top 20 Bleach fights. <laughs> I have to remember which one, because I was watching a couple of them um, before this video, but I don't know which ones they're gonna put in this uh, in particular video. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and hop right into this Watch Mojo. I usually have some good stuff, but let's let's go ahead and watch it. I'm, I'm sure I held y'all long enough for the intro, but yes. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Bleach fight scenes. You will understand. That one with Yukiora, the fight he had with Yukiora has to be, it's either that one or Aizen. That it has, like, there's no way that's not number one. Like, just in my opinion. Because those fights was banging. Like, especially the one with Yukiora. Like, it was it was insane. <laughs> especially when my boy went to sit in house vacation we'll mode. looking at the best <laughs> fight scenes from the anime Bleach. We'll be basing our entries on story importance, intensity, and their cool factor. Number 20, Ichigo vs. Gin. Gin Ichimaru is one of the most enigmatic and fascinating characters in the show, and it isn't until his final arc in the show that we get to see how strong he truly is. While his superior Aizen is busy fighting several other Shinigami captains, Gin fights Ichigo. Gin's ba Spoiler alert, if y'all have not watched the show, I mean, if you're here, then you might want to leave because it's, I'm just going to be spoiling it. But yeah, one of the things that I hated too, another person I hate that they killed was Gein. Like, I hate that they killed Gein, especially when you find out, like, why Gein was playing along and doing what he did, you know, playing along with Aizen's whole plan and everything. Basically, yeah. Bankai proves difficult for Ichigo to handle, as he can extend his sword to an incredible degree and at blinding speed. Kamishi Nino Yari. The rapid speed of the exchanges and the fact that whole buildings <laughs> are sliced through lends a great spectacle to the fight. While the fight doesn't have a true resolution, at least Gin didn't troll Ishigo as badly as he did during their first go around. If you still won't leave, I will have to kill you right now. Number 19, Mayuri vs. Saya Leporo. What oh, happens when you get funny. two supernaturally overprepared mad scientists to fight each other? This, this is what happens. 
My goodness. Everyone keeps chattering. It's so noisy. 12th Division Captain Mayuri Kurotsuchi arrives just in time to save Uryu and Renji from the 8th Espada Sael Aporo Grants. The two combatants aren't really combat types, instead using a variety of absurd booby traps using their unique powers and abilities to survive and counter lethal blows. This all culminates in Mayuri delivering a poison to the Espada, which enhances Sael Aparo's sense of time. There's no need. He basically tortured, like, that was just like, that's probably, that's the worst way I, to probably die. Like, instead of just killing him, Mayuri basically just poisoned the man. And then it's supposed to be like for like a million or a thousand years, something like that. Like, so I'm rewatching it anyways, but he is just going to sit there waiting for, to die. Like, time is going to go by so slow for him, like. If you have not watched, if you are a fan of anime and you have not watched the Bleach series, like, honestly, I just don't know what you're doing. Like, I, yes, I'm just Bleach's number one advocate. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Need to put up your defenses. <sighs> the hollow scientist then experiences centuries of agony as Mayuri slowly stabs him. Now that is brutal. You'll be seeing me again in about a hundred years. Yeah, a hundred years. I said like a thousand years. Number 18, Hisagi oh, okay, versus Findor. When Aizen and the Espada attack Karakura Town, the fake one anyway, several lieutenants battled the Arankar subordinates. Easily the best of these is the bout between Shuhei Hisagi and Findor Kallius. And this, my friend, is a lieutenant's blade. While it may not have the hype or plot importance of some other fights, this battle has some fantastic choreography, excellent animation, and some great music throughout. I love Hisagi's like sword when he tra and his transform state, like <laughs> when he battling and everything. But this Bleach did good with this too, like the with the whole like a spotter series not they did really good with this because it was basically like i mean they weren't hard like the spot you cannot deny it like yeah they're the enemies but the spotters are hard like they was really giving these soul reapers a run for their money like when you first like when you first ever watched the show like when i first like watched the show what's like being on pins and needles like oh my gosh like oh dude might die like one of your faves might actually die going up against these spiders like so you really don't know like they, they good Findor is an entertainingly arrogant villain while his sagi goes from being a guy who just looks cool to one who can back up his badass look with badass action all right? in all it's exactly the kind of bleach fight we love. <laughs> Boy, screaming for his life. Number 17, Yoruichi vs. Soifon. During the initial Soul <laughs> Society arc, the former captain of the 2nd Division Yoruichi of the Shinigami comes face to face with the current one. Yoroichi fights her former subordinate, Soifon, in a lightning-fast battle. I guess you could say that. I'll show you. Girl, Yoroichi was gone, you know what I'm saying, like a hundred years or so, and Soifon just started getting a little beside herself, like, girl, like, she really thought that she, she, she really thought that she was gonna beat Yoroichi, like, and then when you watch that fight, when you watch that battle, it's like, Girl, Soifon, you really miss Yoruichi because Soifon was doing a lot of talking to be battling somebody in the heat of the moment. Like, Yoruichi was doing a whole lot of talking. It's like, girl, just fight. Like, girl, you miss Yoruichi. You miss Yoruichi because Soifon was, like I said, she was doing a lot of talking during that battle she had with Yoruichi. Unlike most Shunigami, the pair of them focus more on hand to hand combat. Of course, Soifon's special ability to kill in two hits keeps the tension high. Also, Soifon's bitterness over Yoroichi leaving is driven home by a flashback during the fights, in which we see their history. That gotta hurt though, like how would y'all feel about that? Somebody that you held to such a high regard, like, that you would just literally fall to the ends of the earth, like, come on Yoroichi, that was dirty though, like, I mean, okay, you didn't have time, uh, look, she did just leave my girl Soifon just, you know, 
out there in the wind. Sway phone just like don't didn't even know what happened. Like literally, like yo dude, she just she just disappeared like that. Like just ducked off, disappeared Udada. Like so, yeah, that dude got hurt. Sway phone really just had a lot of resentment and hate towards yo dude. Cause girl, how you just gonna leave her out there like that? Like how you just gonna dip off and just leave like that? I mean, really? You don't together. do that. I should have surpassed you by now. I'm stronger than you. Why are you still standing? This all boils over when Yoroichi outclasses Soifon with a technique the latter developed specifically to surpass her. The combo of emotions, unusual fighting tactics, and the fact that it's a rare bleach fight between two women makes this a standout. You have gotten much stronger since the last time I saw you, Soifon. But who would have been crying after that fight, though? Like, this girl, you all reach been gone for like a hundred years or whatever, and you soy phone, and you still cannot surpass her. Like, you still not up to par with her. Like, who, who wouldn't have been crying? <laughs> who wouldn't have been crying? Like, there's no way. Like, look, man, it's just not gonna happen. Like, no, nah, this is just the. No, number six, you gotta rethink Pitsukaya everything. Like, you gotta Haribel. rethink your whole soul career. Returning to the battle in fake Karakura Town, 10th Division Captain Toshiro Hitsugaya is matched up against the theater spotter Tia Haribel. Throughout the fight, each combatant appears to have the upper hand. With Haribel I mean, if y'all look at my YouTube banner, like, <laughs> the true Bleach fans would know, like, who, 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 who I'm supposed to be. Like, Tia Haribel was hard. Like, in outfit banging. Seeming to cut Hitsugaya in half, only for it to be an ice clone. <sighs> then Hitsugaya seems to be able to counter Haribel's water abilities, since he can freeze them with his ice powers, only for her to break through them. At last, Hitsugaya manages to imprison her in ice, Granted, she's freed later, but while it lasts, it's a great fight between two of the more notable characters on both sides. Your life will have disappeared. Number 15, Kamamura and his Sagi vs. Tozen. Blindness comes in many forms, and this fight proves it. Traitorous Shinigami captain Kaname Tozen is confronted by his former friend Sajin Komamura and his old lieutenant Hisagi. <clears throat> you have lost the true vision you had as a soul reaper. You know I am telling you the truth. Having embraced hollow abilities, Tozen is able to dominate much of the battle. After stabbing Hisagi, yeah, Kaname, like, like, I'm thinking like Kaname on that one. Like, Tosin did all this going around his whole soul creep, soul, soul creeper. <laughs> soul reaper career, the whole point of him becoming a soul reaper, you know, to uphold justice and stuff like that. And then you side with somebody like Aizen, who's trying to turn hollows into soul reapers and reach the pinnacle of, like, being above, like, a god. Like, just the thirst for power but on the other hand i get you know with toast in the sand because it's the if you watch bleach in my opinion the soul society is not always right like the soul society have did some messed up stuff like i mean just even the people that's just living like in the rukon district and all that like just hungry poor and all that like outside of the walls you know of where the soul reapers live it's, it is crazy like it's messed up stuff like but and, and then even with the whole thing what they do with the mod souls they created him, then they want to kill him. The whole thing with the bounce. It was messed up. Like, y'all creating these people and creating these things, and y'all want to just kill them because y'all have no use for them or it's wrong. You decide it's wrong. It is messed up. So, but then it's like, but with Tosin, it's like, okay, you pick from going to one side that's messed up and have his faults and stuff, and go to another side and side with another dude who just is bad. Like, if not worse. Like, Aizen was ready to like kill like basically everybody in Katakuta town for the for the king's keys. Some like come on. Ian seemingly taking him out of the fight, Tozen achieves Why you ain't an just even make more your monstrous own, like... transformation that allows him to see. Ironically, it also gives him a hell of a blind spot as Hisagi is able to surprise his old captain and mortally wound him. That's enough. You're not really. 
Captain Tosin anymore. The fact that Tosin has betrayed not only his friends, but also the person he used to be, lends the fight a sense of tragedy which others don't often have. Reap. Kazeshini. Number 14. Maybe, maybe it was the eyesight that sold him. Maybe Aizen was like, if you side with me, Tosin, you're going to be able to see finally. Maybe that, maybe that's what it was, y'all. Like, because, I mean, who wants to live their life in darkness? That is that's, that is sad. Like, so Tosin, like, I, I want to see. He was able to see. I mean, when he got those powers. That, but he was messed up, though. He was messed up when he seen what his friend looked like. Like, then I'm talking to a dog this whole time. Like, are you but maybe maybe that's what sold Tosin. Maybe that's why he went over to the other side. Cause he like, I'm gonna be able to see if I come over here and side with Eisen. So I mean, still, I mean, is that enough for somebody to side with a new team like that? Like I said, that's just as bad, or if not worse, like still killing people and stuff. I guess so. In Byakuya this versus was Koga, a good fight. during a rebellion of Zanpakuto spirits in Soul Society, Captain Byakuya appears to betray his comrades. However, it turns out he was just pretending in order to prevent the release of his notorious ancestor, Koga Kushiki. Koga got uh, his on pop The battle is, of the Kushikis has like a lot Koga of fun standing. elements, such as the prevalence of Kido moves. Ultimately, it's the contrast between the two combatants that proves Koga's undoing. While he shunned relying on his Zanpakuto's power, Byakuya fights together with his sword spirit to win. It may not be canon, but this is still a banger of a fight. Number 13, Kenpachi vs. Tozen and Komamura. Not many people can take on two Shinigami captains and survive, and Kenpachi Zaraki is one of them. The blood this Kenpachi is like... Kenpachi is hard. Like, honestly, obviously if Ichigo was not the main character, there's no way anybody would put Kenpachi. Like, Kenpachi the head captain. Okay, Kenpachi is, is supposed to be the head captain. Like, nah, because we haven't even, even with, I was having this conversation with my husband the other day. Like, he has not watched Bleach. Like, y'all, he's tripping. But, he's, I think he read the, the manga though. But I don't even know if he finished the manga, but I know he hasn't watched the show and all that stuff. But, we was just having this conversation the other day how Yamamoto though, he is, for him to be the head captain, still, you have not even seen, like, the pinnacle you haven't even seen we i feel like we still have not even seen yamamoto's like true power i mean he's the head captain like come on there's obviously more to him like you don't even really see him fight like that throughout bleach like only here and there but you know he the head captain he's chilling he's sending his his little captains out there to handle his business so i mean what do you expect but kenpachi though know, like i said like kenpachi is hard because all the if you think about all the power that kenpachi has first of all he already hiding a lot of his power underneath that eye patch just so his the people like he's like he said in the show just so the people that he fighting you know with his bloodthirsty self so he can have time to survive just a little bit longer he can have fun with them so that's why he keep you know that that eye patch on <clears throat> so he don't overpower them too easily that's first off and then just the thing about the dude already has all of this power before he even takes the eye patch off or releasing more of his power and still on top of that kenpachi does not even use his zanpakuto's power because he's never talked to his zanpakuto so he don't you don't even know what his zanpakuto is even capable of that's even more power that he has not even tapped into so basically my boy out here just being hard just off raw strength of his own just walking around with a rusty tour whooping people like that i mean look Kenpachi is serving people up easily. Like yeah, like he said, definitely nobody else gonna be able to go against like that many captains like that, like on their own. But, but Kenpachi, like the battle hungry captain is always a wild card, and this fight with Tozen and Komamura is great to watch. I think the time has come to put an end to your arrogance. First, Kenpachi manages to hold off Komamura's abilities, which give him the strength of a giant. Then he gets caught in Tozen's Bankai, which cuts off all his senses except touch. 
Even with that handicap, he still manages to nearly kill the future traitor. Sadly, just as Kamamura steps in and is ready to use his Bankai, the fight gets interrupted. Still, while it lasts, it's a great fight that showcases some awesome abilities and solidifies Kenpachi as a total badass. Speaking of which... Then after you're dead, go reincarnate yourself so I can kill you all over again! Number 12, Kenpachi vs. I, I, I was... Okay, I was just thinking this in my head. I'm like... I'm trying to remember, um, do name, but it's no T or no, no, no T or however you say it, whatever. But, um, I was just about to say, if they have Kenpachi on there when he fought against the two captains, eh, yeah, that was a good fight, but I feel like they could have put other fights in there. But let's, let's see, let's, let's, let's see them finish the list first. But I'm like, they definitely have to put that fight in there with Kenpachi, you know, with old dude, as they have right here on number 12. This was, and it was good he came in because, I mean, Ichigo was getting his, whoop, like, Ichigo. Look, you're making us look bad. Get, get it together. Tora. A lot of Bleach fights involve special powers or complicated choreography. This is simplicity itself. The most savage Espada, Noitara Gilga, gets into a no holds barred brawl with Kenpachi. What? Is that really all you've got? Trying not to keep stopping it, but Bleach really did good with the fights, like the characters, the spiders that they compared, or the, you know what I'm saying, like they put up against the captains, or like the, the in this in this whole series, like it was good. These fights was good, like they really they they knew what they was doing. Good. <laughs> Let's give it up for the writers of Bleach, y'all. Look. The two eyepatch sporting monsters take turns wailing on each other, with each unleashing their true strength and appearing to gain the upper hand. However, throughout it all, Kenpachi is having the absolute time of his life fighting a strong opponent. Now we're talking. This is great. We're having some fun now. <laughs> Eventually, though, a little change in stance proves the deciding factor, and Kenpachi manages to cut Noitara down. Like Kenpachi himself, this fight is pure, ferocious hype, and we're here for it. All day, every day. <laughs> Number 11, Ichigo vs. Yushima. Yes, yes, it's another filler fight, but it's pretty damn amazing. After Soul Society... Bleach is so good that even the Bleach... Fillers was good. Like, come on. Like, even the fillers. I'm whoever hating on Bleach. Honestly, like, you need help. Bleach was good. Like I said, even the fillers, even the Bleach fillers was good. Because usually when you watch an anime show, you like, okay, can you hurry get back to the storyline? Like, I don't really care about these fillers. Like, especially if you have to wait like each week for the new episode to come out. Now. Naruto, my husband says he cannot get through Naruto because of all the fillers. He don't like the fillers. And he not really messing with the fillers. Me personally, I mess with Naruto so much. I watched it all the way through, you know, Naruto, 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 Shippuden, all that. I watched it all the way through. I watched all the fillers. And I like the fillers. Like, I don't know. If I really mess with the show, like, usually I mess with the fillers. Like, and they, Naruto has some good, I don't like the fillers. It's good. I liked it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being a big softie, but I thought the fillers was good. Bleach for sure has some really good fillers. Like I said, even when you watch the fillers, it don't make you, when you watching the fillers, it don't make you feel like, oh my gosh, can you hurry up and get right back to the main storyline because like nobody cares about this. Like no, the filler, you get invested, at least for me, like you start getting invested in the storyline of the fillers, like. Uh he is invaded by mod soul copies of the Shinigami. Ishigo confronts their leader, Oko Yushima, or at least his own mod soul copy. It's a whole thing. Regardless, Ishigo's fight with Yushima has some amazing back and forth throughout. And while his friends do join in, the real highlight is his alone. That one gets a Gaten show he does? Incredible. The 
the animation throughout is a step above even some of the real story moments, and it certainly helps elevate this battle, though not quite enough to make it into the top 10. Ugh. Number 10, Ichigo vs. Renji. If all I have to worry about is 11 more like that one, then I think I'm gonna be just fine, Renji. While trying to rescue Rukia from execution in Soul Society, our protagonist finds his path blocked by Renji, one of the strongest foes he's fought up until this point. Don't you get it, Ichigo? It's all your fault! It's your- Renji was not even mad at Ichigo. Renji was literally hating on Ichigo because Ichigo was doing with Renji to have enough but I uh, to do like that's really why Renji had it out for Ichigo because Renji wanted to fight. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna forget my boy name. Uh, talking too much. Renji wanted to fight Bianchi, y'all. Like, boy, the whole top point, the whole reason why you even got under the whole reason why you even went to you know be uh Bianchi y'all's lieutenant and all that you wanted to be closer to the dude that you wanted to surpass like because you wanted to get Rukia back because you feel like he took Rukia away from you like I said he really went out of his way to go back to the world of the living with Bianchi y'all to get uh Rukia back and to kill uh Ichigo because he wanted Rukia to get her soul ripper powers back only not knowing that Ichigo has his own soul ripper powers of his own. I mean, literally, after you watching the show, like, even when Rukia first gave Ichigo his power, she was like, dang, this boy is growing, like, at a crazy rate as a soul reaper. Like, just the stuff that Ichigo was doing, like, come on, like... And honestly, after, while, while you watching the show, too, before they even, like, when they get when he get into that whole fight with Aizen and Ichigo find out that his daddy used to be a soul reaper, before they even get to that point, when I first watched the show, like... Earlier on, and so as you know, keeps continuing to go on. I'm like, especially when they, you know, touched on the fact that Ichigo obviously has so many powers of his own. That's telling you right then and there, like, his daddy is had to have been a soul reaper, like, and just got with a human, which was his mom. Because where he get these soul reaper powers of his own from, like, that that he that he had already had, like, I mean, I'm just saying, you're gonna put two and two together, I mean. It's his daddy. It's his peppy. But yeah, Renji was just hating because, like I said, Ichigo was doing that he didn't have enough courage. Was doing what he did not have enough courage to do. You know, he knew he couldn't whoop Byakuya. He couldn't really save Rukia. So he could just stand by and be crying. Because like when Rukia was in that cell before they had even transferred her. You know what I'm saying? Like... He was telling Biaki, oh, did you hear? They moved up her execution date, da da this. Or like, Biaki, I didn't care. He was rich. He was upset and all. Surprised at Biaki because Biaki basically told him, like, okay, and like, what I'm supposed to do? That's how Renji was like, oh my gosh, like, oh my god, I'm I'm thinking that her brother gonna save her. Like, we really, we really messed up now because I can't do nothing. I can't, I can't put in no word. I definitely can't whoop nothing for real. Like, <laughs> I can't stand in their way. So. It's over for my girl. The action is intense, with Ichigo struggling to overcome Renji's superior strength, as well as his own wavering resolve. Frustrated about being unable to save Rukia himself, Renji exactly. takes out all of his anger on Ichigo. But when Ichigo gains his new determination, Renji surprisingly expresses his hope that he'll succeed. I'm begging you. Yeah, I was depending on my boy Ichigo to come through Number and save nine, the day. Ishida versus Mayuri. I'm going to kill you, you monster. Oh. Next up, we have another classic Soul Society fight between Ichigo's Quincy frenemy Ishida and this bizarre Shinigami captain. Being a mad scientist, Mayuri's cruel tactics and various hidden body modifications make a nice contrast to the honorable, straightforward Ishida. He's fast, but I can still dodge it. In addition to being the first fight to showcase a Shinigami's Bankai, the battle also packs a strong emotional punch due to Mayuri's experimentation and murdering of Ishida's fellow Quincy, including his grandfather. I damn you, you Quincy bastard! <laughs> Number 8, Stark vs. Shu- And when Mayuri went- <laughs> When Mayuri went back home <laughs> to his fight, <laughs> And, and like changed and he on that one scene when he was getting out the tub or whatever you know when he was going back to recover 
I was not expecting no black man with no purple hair up under that whole little get up. Like, when I first watched the show, I was thinking that Mayuri was, I thought that was just how Mayuri looked. Like, I didn't know what he was. Like, that whole get up and, you know, with the little ear things guy and the black and white face. I thought this is what he was. I just thought he was some creature. Um, just, you know, hanging out in the soul society. became a soul reaper. So, yeah, I was not expecting that. Sway. I went through all the trouble of a sword release. You can at least show me what I want. Although Coyote Stark fights See, several opponents fight, during the long was, battle between the Espada and the Soul Society's going, captains, obviously. his most consistent foe is Shunsui. The combatants were actually pretty well matched, since they both tend to be lazy, despite how powerful- Yes, they definitely knew what they was doing, like, they basically had them fight, like, <laughs> people, like, fighting themselves, like, fighting somebody that resembles them. They knew what they was doing, obviously. Well, so they the are. Fights. Guess I win. Not quite. <laughs> Stark's gunslinger powers are unlike anything else, and Shinsuei's own abilities centered around a children's game offer unique rules that keep Stark and the audience guessing. Black. Number 7, Aizen vs. Everyone. Ichigo, we will all fight to protect you. As one of the primary antagonists, Sosuke Aizen manages to be intimidating as hell. A traitorous Shinigami captain, he's gifted with strength that dwarfs even that of his former comrades, as well as possessing near-perfect hypnosis abilities. While things appear hopeless at first, the combined efforts of both current and former captains finally manage to injure Aizen. No. It's the other way around. However, this all- They cannot be surprised- Like, this thing right here- how are you surprised that you, it wasn't Aizen that you actually stabbed? Like, see, that right there was just not smart for them to do. Like, as a unit, Ichigo, we will all protect you. No, y'all need to get out the way and let Ichigo do his thing. Because, like, y'all, all y'all standing there have seen, other than, look, the former captains, but the rest of y'all has been in the Soul Society since Aizen has came in. Like, y'all have seen his sword's technique, so y'all are under the hypnosis. Y'all cannot tell what's real from what's fake so actually no ichigo did not need y'all help y'all over here probably stabbed each other didn't even know like come on he he surprised that he put a sword through momo chest you are like no proves to be an illusion as they've actually been fooled this is why ichigo was the one that was like pretty instead, much the one who really could defeat him had the power to cut and he them didn't down. Really at what time did you think that I wasn't using my Kyoga against you? <laughs> Number he six, Ichigo vs. Kenpachi. That's enough of this running around. <laughs> Stop and back. Boy, Kenpachi had my boy Ichigo scared, y'all. He stopped. <laughs> Ichigo Ichigo's was scared. luck takes a turn for the worst when he runs into the Soul Society's most notoriously <laughs> violent captain. Being the first Shinigami captain he faces, Kenpachi tests Ichigo more than any opponent before him. Did I? I mean. Oh, how could Ichigo not be scared? I mean, when well, somebody stabbed through your sword, he stabbed through your zanpakuto and stabbed you in the chest. And what, what really messed Ichigo up was when they first started fighting and Kapachi was like, I'm going to let you get the first, you know what I'm saying, the first go at me. You get the first strike. And if you could cut me, you know what I'm saying? Like, and Ichigo, he like, in a way, this dude tripping, like, he couldn't even, he couldn't even cut Kenpachi. That's what, see, that's what really messed him up, you know what I'm saying? Up here, in the psyche, like, he like, oh, yeah, that's pride, confidence, all of that. From the end on out, it was shut down. That's what, that's why that boy was running through them buildings Tell like that. Not to let up on your that. spiritual pressure. It's an uphill battle for the most part, and after communing with his Zanpakuto, Ichigo only manages to fight his way. Who do y'all think won in that fight, though? I mean, because Kenpachi said... That Ichigo won, but Ichigo fell first. He passed out first, so who y'all think won? Was it a tie, or is it just a matter of who was still standing? You know what I'm saying? Who fell first? Whoops, like, so... ...to a draw. Kenpachi's bloodthirsty joy over fighting is infectious. I mean, me personally, like, if it's not a tie, then... <clears throat> It would have been a tie, obviously they was both out, like they both was in critical, like they both needed some critical care, like they needed some help, like they needed to be, you know what I'm saying, like fixed up. But if you're not going to go with a tie, I mean, Ichigo is my boy, like of course, you know, he the main character, da 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 that, but 
Kim Pachi was still standing. Ichigo fell first. Ichigo fell first. You know, he put up a good fight though. And we can't help but love the palpable danger and great character development this fight provides. <laughs> Number five, Ichigo vs. Grim Jow. Yes, I like, I, I like uh, my boy Grim Jow, Jack or Jack, okay? Grim Jow, I like Grim Jow. You know what I'm saying? Like. Speaking of hot headed opponents, our next entry is this final fight with the six Espada Grim Jow. The pair clash several times throughout the Arankar arc, but their final fight blows the others out the water. <laughs> Grim Jow appears to be the only thing preventing Ichigo from rescuing his friend Orihime, and the Espada himself is ecstatic to finally get a good fight out of the hero. The action is fast paced and excellently choreographed, making for one of the most intense bouts in the series. That was a good fight. <laughs> Grim Jow knew right then and there, he was like, it's over. <laughs> There's no way I'm free to go, I'm just got to take this L. Like, Grim, I, I like Grim Jow. Like, <laughs> hey, and I like his name too. Like, Grim, he had one of the hardest names out of the spotters. Like, Grim Jow Jagger Jack. Like, I just like the way that that rolled off the tongue. Like, if I have another kid, I might just have to name them Grim Jow Jagger Jack. Granberry. Grim Jow Jagger Jack Granberry. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we might have to, you know what I'm saying? Number four, Ichigo I vs. Grim Jow. Let's get this over with, Grim Jow. Big talk, kid. That's why I like you. <laughs> this battle sees Ichigo pitted against a former substitute Shinigami Kugo Ginjo, whose machinations nearly robbed Ichigo of his powers That's why my entirely. Boy his powers Ichigo! Due to their similar life paths and the fact that Ginjo steals some of Ichigo's abilities, he comes across as a dark mirror for Ichigo himself making him a memorable opponent to say the least. Being the final fight of the series, the animation team certainly made sure Bleach would end on a high note. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, Ichigo vs. Byakuya. Is this the true power of your son Bakuto? The climactic like, battle of the Soul Society arc features Byakuya Ichigo hard. facing off against Rukia's brother Byakuya, whose stoic and confident personality contrasts nicely with Ichigo's hot-headed determination. One thing about Byakuya, like, the most you're gonna see him do as far as breaking a sweat is like, <laughs> his eyes gonna get a little bit bigger like when he gets surprised, but he not gonna, Byakuya, like, he just be cool with it though, like, Byakuya, he just, he's cool, all the way to the end. That's that's somebody that man. You talking about pride? Like I'm a person with a lot of pride, but y'all can y'all like my boy gonna stay cool to the end. Like down on his knees, cut up, laid out, beat up. He still gonna keep that cool persona on. Like y'all can y'all just do not care. Like he like look, I got the whole Coochie Key Clan. You know what I'm saying? Like depending on me, I'm the face of the Coochie Key Clan. So I got to keep. I gotta say face. Like it don't matter. Be out here What's the week. matter? Am I moving too slow for you? Just say so. I can move a little faster if you'd like. Don't get too cocky. Both fighters seem to have the upper hand at several points, and the back and forth between their respective powers, as well as numerous iconic moments, including Ichigo's first use of the Bankai, make this one of the most memorable and exciting fight scenes in the series. <laughs> Number two, Ichigo versus Aizen. Yes, I did catch your sword. <laughs> Does that scare you? After thoroughly wrecking everyone he comes across, Big Bad Aizen finally meets his match. Ichigo returns from training outside of time that to battle with the seemingly godlike villain hard. with shocking ease. Like, the anticipation for this fight was huge, as the entire series had been building up to it for years. It was bittersweet though when he used it. Yeah, it was hard, but he when Ichigo used that final guess about Tenso. It was just like, dang, it's over for my boy. Like, yeah, but he ain't he about to lose his powers. Like, but I mean, what was he gonna do? Cause wasn't nobody else gonna save the world but Ichigo. Everybody else, all they could do was just be side so Bob, just watching it go down. Able to withstand my attack with very little damage. However, your left arm is no longer usable. 
While it didn't quite live up to the hype, given that it's relatively short and the power scaling is a little narratively convenient, it's still immensely satisfying to see the oh-so-smug Aizen defeated at last. No, 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 yeah, that fight definitely could've went on longer, but hey. Number one, Ichigo versus Ukiura. Yes, hey, I thought, look, especially when Ichigo go into that holification form, with that, with, when he had this fight with Yukior, because I mean, like, honestly, that was like, look, he needs to go into the altercation form because Yukior was. Ichigo, our boy, was like, probably not going to be here no more if he did not go into the altercation form because that hollow don't be playing with Ichigo. Like, boy, if you die, I die. So like, I'm just going to go ahead and take over before you get us both killed. So that hollow to be jumping out. Like, but this was good. Like, because look, when Yukior. When he stabbed that hole in Ichigo chest like that, and that boy just, boom, like fell to the floor, his eyes just, you could just see the life just leave Ichigo's eyes when he hit the floor. I was watching this for the first time, like, oh my, I mean, he's a main character, so there's no way he's, he could die, like, right? Like, come on, they got more episodes, right? Like, come on, like, but, yeah, it was just like, oh, it's over for Ichigo, like, it's it's over like come on Consciousness. do not let you your guard messed up for that if our but... last entry was a battle of the gods then this is one between demons like Grim Zhao, Ichigo had a running rivalry with the emotionless fourth espada and it comes to a head in dramatic fashion you will understand Ukiura proves to be among the most challenging of Ichigo's opponents and almost puts Ichigo out of commission for good when he shoots a Cerro Oscurus through his chest. This however leads to Ichigo taking on a new powerful hollow form, one which engages in a brutal large-scale battle with Ukiura that we won't be forgetting anytime soon. Man, this fight, this battle was still iconic in the Blue series. Like he said, you cannot forget this 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 fight. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other Hey, those pick look the 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 number one spot with him and Yukior, yeah, I definitely agree with that one. Now the one with him and Eisen, yeah, that definitely could have been longer. Like I don't know why they made that one so short, but I guess they was just like look, we done ran this whole thing with Eisen and his little corrupt little thing he got going on long enough. Come on, we already know that each go is finna whoop him, so but this I, this 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 was a good list. This was good. This was good, like I mean, okay. But yeah, there's a couple people that in the series, like I know they was bad, but can't y'all just, they were so hard. It's like, can y'all not just write them in the story to like turn into, you know, good characters that want to like save the world and stuff like that. Like Green Jow, uh, Yukiara, um, Aizen, like uh, who else? Uh, ha Harry Bell or Holly Bell, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's just a couple of characters, you know what I'm saying? That was just like, come on, man, don't kill them off because they're just so good. Like their their techniques and stuff is just so like, look, it's just so good. It's like, come on, we can't kill these people off, y'all. I I cannot wait. I cannot wait until I just finally sit down and watch the new series because I just knew, I just knew, ugh, I just knew they had to bring Bleach back at some point. Like you just cannot, honestly, like. I know I said this before, but like, come on, can y'all not just, just make more Bleach episodes until I just leave this earth? Like, I would just be old in my house, can barely even walk around and move, just still watching Bleach, like, just content with life. <laughs> but yeah, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comment section below. If you have watched Bleached, what do y'all feel about this list? What's some fights that y'all would have probably put in there? Um, and if you have not watched Bleach, if you plan on watching Bleach, or maybe after seeing some of these fights, y'all probably like, mm, maybe I should like give the Bleach series a chance. Maybe I should watch it. Or maybe you watching it was like, no, it's Bleach is still trash. Which if you, I mean, honestly, if you think that, like I said, like, I just, I don't understand. Like, I just cannot wrap my mind around it. But, okay, you guys. <laughs> Y'all already know I will see you guys tomorrow. And yes, I post Monday through Friday and for specific uploads. Just check that down in the description section below. Bye.